What up, pimps? No, I'm kidding. Uh, anyway, I got something in the mail today and I'm really excited to get it installed, so I'm just going to rush into it like usual. I have several Game Boy Colors here. Uh, this should be a little bit of a spoiler on what I got, but anyway. Here it is. It is this box here. I've just received this from China. Inside we got plenty of foam and I, I'll get into this in a bit, but I did end up paying a little bit extra for some protective packaging here and oh man, was that a good idea because this, I'm very pleased with this. Anyway, I got this. I haven't even opened it up yet. But I already know exactly what this is. This is the other uh, item I ordered off of Taobao. This is the Game Boy Color LCD. Uh, a few weeks ago I got my Game Boy Advance Taobao LCD and that was the kind of weird IPS display with the four times linear scaling. And yeah, I've been playing with it kind of off and on. I, Quite frankly, haven't had a lot of time to really sit down and play with it. But, you know, it's really cool. It's working out for me so far. Uh, excuse me while I get this open here. Plenty of bubble wrap, which is, uh, you know, I can't complain about that. But, here we go. I don't think there's enough packaging on there. No, I'm kidding. I can't complain about that. Okay. So, in here we have the the screen. Not just any screen. The screen. Uh, this is, as I understand it, it's like an old cell phone screen. Uh, old being relative uh, it's from like a model from, I don't know, probably late 2010-ish, 2010s. Um, I guess at this point, probably 10 years old. It is used in portrait, uh, unlike the Game Boy Advance display, which is in landscape here, uh, but it only fills up part of the screen to keep the actual aspect ratio of the Game Boy Color and uh, it uses the same four times linear scaling that both Ben Ben's new Freckle Shack uses and uh, that other LCD I have uses. And I've been told it's the same LCD, but it looks a little bit different to me. I don't know. I don't know what, it, I mean, maybe it's, it's like an equivalent model and it's just my model happens to be slightly different hardware variant or something, but uh, of course, it's got its own custom PCB here, and I'm willing to bet all of these components are etched off, but I can't help but take a peek anyway. This should use a CPLD, or I'm sorry, an FPGA, just like the Game Boy Advance one. And uh, I'd taken pictures of that one, I made an imager album, but I'm just going to do this on camera this time. If I can even get this peeled up. I'm making a mess of this. Oh. Bugger. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to ruin this, so I'm not going to do that. Anyway, let's get into it. This is going to go into a Game Boy Color like that, except flipped around. Uh, all the extra components, they couldn't fit under there, so they made a little bit of a trailing bit. I My original plan, I kind of really want to put this in a clear... Game Boy, because I, I, I don't know, I kind of like seeing all the guts inside, uh, but I don't want to just dive right in and start cutting this shell apart. I also don't want to use the Game Boy Color that's in here. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw my other video where I was trying to get this thing working. It does work, uh, but I want a smooth install. I don't want to have to take this apart and swap out the Game Boy Color just in case there's an issue. So I'm going to end up using this Game Boy. Uh, Eventually it's going to go in this shell, but, so I'm not just cutting blindly, I'm going to practice with this shell here. Now, this I had used for another build. It's an aftermarket shell, and of course there's a pretty big issue with that if you want to use it with a regular Game Boy Color. But all I really need from this is the front panel 
and just just so I can really plan out my cuts. Uh, on the Game Boy Advance, I ended up kind of winging it, and see, uh, do there were a couple things I wish I wish I'd done differently, but at that point it was a little bit too late to really get into it. Uh, just to verify before I start ripping this apart. Do I have a game here? Yes, I do. Okay, so yeah, this is working fine. This is just, what is it, Pokemon Prism? Yeah. Okay, and that's, for those curious, this is a custom flash card based off of the MBC chip. And it actually does have a working real-time clock, uh, FRAM battery list saving, so the battery all that does is control the RTC. And it's completely reflashable, so I can put any any ROM within reason on there. It's only got like two megabytes of storage, so it's not gonna fit too much. Now, I really like this Game Boy, but the shell has seen better days. It's kind of yellowed. I don't know how well you can make it out on the camera at all because there I've done zero color calibration. Uh, you name it, I haven't done it. Uh, but this is supposed to be a teal Game Boy. Maybe you can see the difference between this part of the plastic here and then in the cartridge slot or in the battery cover and this part here. It's I don't know. It's it's a less appealing color. It's not a bad color. It's just not what I want. So that's out. Oh, that one. Okay. I'm gonna set that aside. Besides, I can always reuse the shell for something else later. Um, before I do anything else with this, well, I'm gonna remove that. Just kidding. Now, before I do anything else with this, I'm going to get my little battery pack here and a multimeter. And I, I just want to see how much power this thing uses. You know, what, what I can basically see what I can expect out of uh, my batteries here. Um, entangle this. If it's anything like the Game Boy Advance, uh, it's going to end up using like 150 milliamps or something crazy like that. But I'll, I'll get to that in a sec. Okay. I'll turn the volume all the way up, drop that in there. Oh, we should put that in the right mode. Okay. So, oops, dropping it. We'll just say on the main menu there. Hopefully that's in frame. Yeah, it is. So we'll call it what? 96, 97. Let's call it 96 milliamps. And we'll use the same cart just for baseline. There should be a big A, but oh well. I'll put these off to the side. Don't need them for a while. Okay, put these off to the side so I can dump them on the floor later. And then bitch about missing screws. Oh, oh there it is. Speak of the devil. So there's the six tri point screws on the outside. Uh, any standard driver should be able to take care of them. Uh, and then there's three Phillips screws on the inside here. Well, I, I'm still not sure about this. I think they're actually JIS screws, not Phillips. And there is a difference. You can remove most JIS screws with the proper sized Phillips driver, but if you use the wrong Phillips driver, you are going to strip the screw very quickly. And you're not gonna have a good time. Okay, so I'll pull that out and oops. I'll set this aside. I will be saving this for another Game Boy Color, maybe that I refurbish or something along the lines. Um, yeah, because 
I'm not going to be using this shell for this build. Okay. Okay, enough of that. So, there are five solder points on this thing here. There are three on this corner here, right under the foam, and then two down here under the foam. Unlike my Game Boy Advance video, I don't have a little, um, little imager album handy to reference, but there's a very, very awesome video by a, uh, another YouTuber, or Redditor, or both, I guess. Um, let's see, his handle is the Chinese guy, and, you know, it's very thorough, very easy to follow, very instructional, very good, highly recommended. So to get to these solder points, I'm doing something that's probably not good for my health. I'm just melting straight through the uh, foam because I already know where the solder points are. So it's that one down there. This one right here. That's peeling off. I, I should have just peeled that over. Now we'll keep peeling that back to get a peek under the skirt here. Interesting how stuck down it is on top, yet down here coming up nice and easily. Maybe that's by design. Interesting how there's a big hole in the PCB. That explains why it's so floppy. So, yeah, I can already see this little component here. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the backlight driver. All the identifying information has been etched off. I find it a little bit ironic, uh, but I, I, I guess this is a topic for another video that uh, but I just find it a little bit ironic that China is worried about someone reverse engineering. Someone from China is worried about someone else reverse engineering their design. So I'm just adding a little bit of my solder to these points here. Because I like to use this lead based stuff and quite frankly I don't know if that's what's already on here. Okay, I'll stick that back down. So these two points are actually already labeled, these two down here. There's a little plus here and a little minus next to this other point here. These are the battery points. These get soldered straight to these on your Game Boy Color motherboard. So these things hook straight into the battery. They're not running through the power switch or anything like that. So I'm going to do this. Oh, before I do that. I'm going to put this in this shell here, even though this is missing the battery compartment, should hold these in place a little uh, so that I don't completely mess them up as I'm adding solder. I'm going to add some solder to these, like I did the other points. Apologies for all the delicious flux smoke going into the camera. I need to bump up the temperature a little. Now I have too much. It's all fun and games until you put too much solder on there. Oh well, that's what the solder sucker's for. Whatever, I'll get back to that in a minute. I'm just playing around with the soldering iron at this point. Okay, I need some wire. I am going to use. Yeah, I'll use this. I'm going to use this 26 gauge stranded copper wire. Uh, for something like this, solid core would probably be better. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's use the solid core wire. I have 26 gauge Kynar solid core wire. This stuff is approximately the same um, thickness as far as metal goes but it's a lot thinner because there's not a lot of space between each individual strands because there's only the one strand. 
So I'm going to cut a length of this. And how long would you say? Let's do that. Now, optimally, you would use different colored bits of wire to indicate the different polarities, but I only have the one color in this size. But this is also just for me. It doesn't matter too much. As long as I pay attention, it should be good. battery plus that's the battery minus and oh I already put my soldering iron away oopsie doodle again And I am almost definitely going to end up desoldering these. I'm just really doing this for double check it works before I start cutting stuff apart. Okay. Now, slip that in there. Close the bail up. And we're done! Ta da! No, I'm kidding. We're not done. Not even close. But done enough for testing. So I'll put the same game back in. Wipe those away. And put the meter back out. Well, I hope that wasn't just shorting. That's probably bad. Okay. there just kind of wedging this in the spring so it doesn't pull off an alligator clip would be optimal but I don't have a clip on that side okay so good news is like the other screen it does not use any current while it's off that is fantastic that means when you put your batteries in it they're not just gonna like drain overnight whether you use it or not, even though it's hooked straight up to the batteries. And we flip this over. Try not to short everything out. Turn the volume back up and flip it on. So if my hand wasn't in the way, you could see the meter pretty much maxed out. And the screen's kind of flickering. And the uh, power light is kind of flickering. Oof, that is rough. Okay, let's try. I'm gonna switch that off. Swap these batteries out. They might be dead or dying. Another set of batteries. Handy. Try that again. Peg the meter. Oh, but look, you can actually see the screen now. Let me turn that off. Oh man, that thing is beautiful. Okay. I'm going to turn that off. Turn my meter to the 10 amp position. Try it again. Let me stop covering them. So yeah, we went from 
96 milliamps to 320. That is not fantastic. That's interesting. Okay, anyway, turn that off. Put that back in the other position so that I can put it away. We are done with that. And by put away, I really just mean put it on the floor for now. I'll put it away later. Okay. Remove the game. I'm going to remove the screen here, turn my light back on so I can see better. Okay, and I am going to desolder it here. I'm going to worry about brightness control for the time being. We're going to set this aside because the next step is to get this to fit into this. So. I'm not mistaken, we need to do a lot of cutting here. So we need to cut off this whole top. That's easy enough. I'm going to score this. Oops. Yeah, that's why I'm practicing. Okay. okay. Now, I can take my flush cutters. them a little bit more. This is definitely what you want to use your flush cutters for. <laughs> but it's alright because I scored it it's coming off easily enough. So for this stubborn piece but that's what the flush cutters actually excel at. Okay. Interestingly enough if this uh, material were a little bit more brittle, this would be a lot easier. Use these flush cutters. At this point I'm just removing the material. The uh, method that shown in the other video that I referenced now oh, these are rubbish it's probably easier but you kind of need a rotary tool to employ that method and you know honestly I think once you've got a once you've got a good method going with the flush cutters it's pretty easy to just nip this stuff off Okay, and something like this you can clean up with a with a Dremel like I would usually do or I guess take a hobby knife or a box cutter or something and just kind of scrape it up and clean it that way. But I'm not going to bother cuz I'm just really using this as a test. Okay, 
Is that all we need to remove up there? I think it is. Okay, so I ended up removing this top area, this whole top wall, and then two of the three supports for the IR LED. Now I need to remove the bottom. And I need to remove, yeah. So I need to remove that whole thing there. So I'm gonna cut that corner. Cut that corner. And then do some scoring again. I'm gonna move my thumb before I put my box cutter into it. not hazard this enough if something feels dumb and you're playing with a knife it's probably dumb and you shouldn't do it this is probably one of the most dangerous tools out there especially when you're using it like this you never want to cut towards yourself if you can avoid it Good. I'm just going to try and break it off and yeah, this big flat piece came off super easy. And the corners, I'm going to use my flush cutters on. That's one of them. And the other. Okay, now I believe I need to remove some of the D-pad area as well, but test fit this. Wow, and start select. This thing is huge. Okay. Do you need it? I don't know. It's super close. Yeah, why not? So I am just going to use my blade to kind of make a mark where I need to cut. I want to try and avoid cutting off more than I need to. Put that to the side before I ruin it. And then I'm just going to go in with the flush cutters again. And I don't even need to score that. Okay. Mm -mm, getting there. Still doesn't fit though. Or maybe it does. And it's not lining up right. It's probably important to get that sorted. Okay, so in my particular case, I need to remove a little bit off the top of these start and select areas. Oh wait, I have to remove, that's probably why it's not fitting. You have to remove this thing as well, the screw post. Another thing the flush cutters come in handy for. I still have to cut out, start, and select. Oof. I don't really want to cut that much out, but... Worst case scenario, I ruin a shell that was uh, already destined for the fuck it bucket, so... Now in the case of start and select and the d-pad cuts, if you're using a clear shell or if you're planning on using a clear shell like I'm planning on using, you should probably spend a little bit more time on these cuts to get them nice and clean instead of just ripping them off. I should have scored that. Now 
to do the pain in the arse way. There we go. Okay. Oof, now it fits beautifully. In fact, it kind of, a little bit too much room. It's all right, I can work around that. Okay, now I need some buttons to test this out. See, these don't fit worth a damn anymore. Oh, but that doesn't actually fit in that hole because there's... A little bit sticking up there. That is what I was afraid of. When you cut all that out, these buttons are a pain in the butt. Well, but then again, I don't think these actually fit. Let me try buttons out of the teal shell here. These are OEM buttons instead of the aftermarket ones. These are probably what you want to use anyway. Yeah, those went in so much easier. That might have been my problem. Yeah, that feels fine. That's all right, because this goes over the pad. Or under the pad, I guess. Okay. sticky bit of foam I'm cutting off. Okay. So I think that this will work. I'm going to go ahead and assemble this and get rid of those. I'm just going to use the buttons from the teal one as well. For now. I think I just dropped them. Oh, there it is. It is not a big deal. B A the membrane D pad. that aside. Come on, wake up. There we go. Alright, now I need some wires for the brightness control. I'm going to test that out now. Cut some more foam off here. So by default, you use the up and down, which are labeled, there's little test points on the board here, P02 and P03. I don't really want to use these if I can avoid it because these are underneath the membrane. I'd like to use ones in a different area. So that's what I'm going to try. So P02 is up. That also looks like it runs up to one of these vias up here. 
Yes. So P02, there's one, two, three, four, five vias right in this little area. It is the top right one. And then P03, I'm willing to bet, is the one at these other ones. Ah. Okay. Yes, that will be excellent. So down is the second from the top, and up is the top right. Uh, and then select, I think, or start. I suppose it doesn't matter too much. Um, by the instructions I have here, it says to use P12, which I'm guessing is select based on its proximity. Yeah. But we can also probably use one of these vias up here. Not that one. Or we just use start. I like start better. That one's off to the side a little bit. Or, so there's this test pad right here or this via right next to it. Well, next and up a little. That's what I'll use. Okay, oh, need some wire. This one I'm going to use, where is it? Oh, it's right here. I'm gonna use my red 30 gauge Kynar wire. And don't need as much, but I'll still make sure to have plenty of slack here. Okay. Needed three wires, one for up, one for down. And then the other for the brightness button. I suppose you could also add your own dedicated button or buttons if you like. I'm not going to be doing that. Okay. We're going to use this via here. is one of the few situations where a conical tip might be a little bit easier. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay. second to heat up. Sorry for the supremely boring wait for my iron to heat up or wait for me to strip wire video. Excellent and this one. I don't know what's going on with this solder blob here, but I'm going to use it. There we go. And it just occurred to me that this is probably out of frame. I'm not going to look up at the moment to check. If it is, I apologize. If not, well, we'll just pretend I didn't say that. And instead of using that via, because there's a bunch of solder mask on it, I can't quite get to it. I'm just going to use the, te the test pad there. Oh, I already put my iron down. I'll just solder these down. And turn it off before I forget about it and start soldering so 
we got up on the top right there that goes to the top blob here we got down on the second from the top goes to this middle blob and then we have start instead of select that's going to go to this bottom blob and we have about 30 minus Let's see maybe I should make these wires shorter And then about 30 plus. All right. It's going to be a pain in the butt to get all the wires in the right spots. Put that in. So maybe you only have to cut this spot on a uh, aftermarket shell. Maybe the OEM shells are spaced a little bit better. Now I'm going to try and slide this in here. Now if you're doing your final install, it is at this point that you'd want to remove that, uh, that little protective cover on the screen. But I am going to be pulling this out off camera a few more times. Most likely. And actually, I probably want to use longer wires than I have here so you can route them. I have no idea how this is going to work. Another benefit of using the uh, solid core wires is when I bend them, they stay where I put them. Alright, so I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but I kind of bent the wires so that they're up and out of the way of all the pads. I did that on both sides there, and I'm going to sandwich this together. And hopefully... Everything's going to line up and it's just going to drop into place, but that doesn't feel like what's happening. Oh, wait. Oh, don't forget about the speaker. At least we don't have to try and fit a speaker, too. Okay, that feels like everything's in place. I'm going to take two screws. The Phillips screws. And if this is a brand new aftermarket shell, these holes are not going to be threaded, so you're going to have to kind of force them as you go. But like I said, I'd use this for another build at one point or another. And there we go. Okay, let's try. Plug that in. And ah, I will use this for the time being. Pop the power switch in. Still got a. Now, I believe you have to do some trimming on the IR window as well. This guy. Or maybe. I'm just cram Oh. No. I think it fits without trimming. Okay. Fold that down. Yeah, 
Everything closes up up there without trimming. Let's just pop the screws in. Because y'all don't need to see me doing this install twice. I'll do that off camera. I'll post pics though. Pictures are always fun. Everyone likes pictures. Nice thing about this mod over the uh, AGS 101 backlight method is that you don't have to bother milling out half your freaking shell. Uh, you still have your top two screws. You still have the little detent on the power switch so that it clicks on and off. And uh, if you use one of those new boxy pixel aluminum shells, you still get your detent and you don't have to bother milling, which by the way, highly recommend those shells if you're doing an AGS 101 backlight mod on a Game Boy Color. You know, if you're using like Ben Venzel Clono or something, highly recommend it. It saves so much hassle. Okay, now I need these baterias. That in, that, that. It's not going together the way I'd like. I'm going to blame that on the aftermarket shell and the fact that I never actually finished screwing these down. Okay. Drop my game in. What the hell is that? There's something on the uh, the little plastic cover here. All right, so there's that, looking good. Got volume. I have brightness control. Oh, that's beautiful. And then, well, yeah, like I said, you'd want to peel that off, and then at this point, you'd be sticking your new lens on and calling it a day. And I am definitely going to do this in a clear shell. I'm really digging that look. So it is at this point that I'm going to bid y'all farewell. Thanks for sticking with me so far and uh, keep on being awesome. Oh, before I go, one quick addendum. Uh, I got this install finished up. I got it out of the junky, junky shell. Got it into the original shell here. Uh, I'm still using the original lens. I'll swap that out when I come to it but there are a couple mistakes I made earlier that I want to address real quick first and foremost is that you do not have to remove that screw post that I removed uh, I wasn't paying enough attention and there's actually a hole in the circuit board uh, that 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 the screw post is used as in conjunction with that hole in the in the circuit board to sort of locate the LCD if you do remove that screw post you're probably gonna have a crooked or off-center screen uh, and it's gonna ruin your day uh, you also at least in an in, uh, in, in OEM shell Jesus I'm sorry uh, you don't have to trim the start and select area like I did in that aftermarket shell now that might have been because I removed that screw post and the screen was shifted too far down. That's why maybe I had to remove that. I don't know. Either way, in an OEM shell, you do not have to remove either that screw post or the start and select area. You don't have to touch those at all. Uh, all I had to remove was a little bit of the D-pad and then the wall up here, wall up here. And then I, had to, I ended up having to trim a little bit on the IR cover. And you can't even tell when it's all set up and when all said and done. So that being said, I want to do a quick comparison here. I have an original Game Boy Color running a game here. I have a backlit Game Boy Color with the AGS 101 screen. And then I have this new Taobao LCD in here. And I also have my EverDrive in here just to show you that, yes, it does work despite the insane power draw. So we'll turn that on. And one cool thing is the, the image itself isn't nearly as small as on the AGS-101 mod. So you don't need like a, oh, let me turn that off. Since we're using backlit screens here. 
so you don't really have to get like a custom bezel or anything uh, and the light is so much dimmer on this console for two reasons one this one's using a lithium battery mod so it's just brighter two this has a brighter led because it's a surface mount one instead of a uh, the original one and three of the batteries in this one are probably just a little bit low uh, but anyway I'm going to just start up the last game I was playing with start here and oh, my Game Boy makes a little noise there it goes resets you can adjust the brightness up or down I'm gonna leave it at max brightness for now and you can see if we compare the two, you can kind of see the picture size difference between the two, if that ever starts. Okay, we're going to skip through that. There we go. It's probably not a very good comparison. They're both on uh, dark screens there. There we go. How's that look? So, I got to play with this a little bit more. I'm super happy with it so far. By the way, really cool mod, definitely recommended. Um, but as far as the screen goes, this is the better screen compared to an AGS-101, hands down. Uh, until I get my hands on Freckle Shack, this is the way to backlight a Game Boy Color, without a doubt. There is a little bit of light bleed if you install it in a uh, clear console down here by the D-pad. You can probably diminish that a little bit with some electrical tape or something but honestly it's not really that bad it's not that distracting i'm sorry i should probably turn that down um and the screen quality itself I, I gotta get a new lens on here this thing's all scratched up and beat up but the screen quality itself it's absolutely absolutely amazing it's pretty similar here well i've been told it's the same lcd as far as the uh backlit game boy advance mod goes but they look slightly different size to me, and like I was saying earlier, that it might just be due to a part number thing or something. But either way, they both use that same... Wow, sorry, framing. Uh, they both use that same... Um, I forgot where I was going with that. Either way, definitely, I recommend both these mods, but especially the Game Boy Color one itself. The Game Boy Advance one, yeah, you can still use those AGS-101 screens. And maybe the DS Lite mod when that comes out. Uh, but until I get my hands on Freckle Shack, this is definitely the way to go. And uh, with that, I'm going to bid you all a good night. Thank you for watching.